very quickly before I get into today's lesson, I want to tell you about a big sale that we're having at Geneva Fine Art. This is the first sale we've ever run. It's 20% off all artist oil color. That's all the paint that we sell at Geneva Fine Art. Every color, the only thing, uh, only paint not included is this foundation stain, but all of our artist oil colors included, 20% off. And that sale is going to run through uh, November 23rd, Thanksgiving Day at noon, Austin, Texas time until November 27th, Cyber Monday. Um, and it ends at midnight, Austin, Texas time. So I wanted to tell you about that. And without further ado, here's uh, today's lesson. So I want to talk about landscape photography um, as it relates to an artist and, and using landscape photography as your source uh, to do paintings from. And there's a number of things to consider. And this goes back to, um, you know, if you look at um, a landscape artist uh, before the age of photography or, you know, in the early days when it wasn't used um, by artists as a source, when artists would either paint plain air or they would do sketches and even color, color sketches, and then they would use that to uh, paint their paintings from and would not use photography. And today, uh, photographs are used extensively by artists, and I see uh, a mistake that I um, notice over and over again, and it's just uh, something, and it's, you know, basically you can go and paint any, uh, copy any photograph you want to copy, and do a landscape from it, but there's a real big difference between looking at a photograph and looking at a real landscape in person, which is the only thing um, the artist from, you know, 150 years ago ever did. So let me just uh, talk about those things, and the best way to do that is just to show you a bunch of examples. So this first uh, picture here that I have is a uh, sunset, or actually a sunrise, that I uh, photographed when I was on the Big Island this last summer uh, in Hawaii, and this um, was actually exposed properly, meaning you'll notice that the, where the yellow is, it's not um, washed out. The yellow uh, color is uh, retained through all of it. And uh, typically what would happen is when people uh, photograph landscapes is they, if you just hold up your cell phone and take a picture, typically the sky is gonna be blown out, meaning it's gonna be white, 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 much too bright, and then you can see the foreground. But if you expose the, the sky properly, like I have done here, then you'll notice that the foreground goes completely black. And that's because if you're standing there in person and you're looking at you know, a sunset, you don't see black uh, when you're standing there. You see the sky in perfect exposure with your naked eye, and then you can see all the grass in front of you, you can see the trees, you can, you can see everything else. Nowhere, um, you know, in very rare exceptions, uh, do we, when we're looking at something in person, see a big area of black, solid black. So uh, when an artist was painting in the old days, before photography, they would paint that detail in the foreground. Um, whereas if you're working from a properly exposed um, picture like this, you may, be, you may think that, well, I'll paint the foreground black. And all of this goes back to, I've got another video that talks about the limitations of photography, where when you're looking at something in person, you're looking at you know, light and shadow, and you're actually seeing the presence of light and the absence of light, um, which is, can be hugely different. You can be looking at a bright sky or into a deep shadow underneath a car, and your eye is able to see all of that in perfect detail, whereas if you took a photograph of it, you would either have to expose for the sky or expose for underneath the car in the dark. So that's in another video, but this is what we're dealing with. So let me just talk about, uh, let me show you some other examples here. Uh, this next photograph is uh, one I took on Maui uh, again this last summer. And um, you'll notice that in the foreground, it's a beautiful picture, and you can see some detail of the little uh, canopy tents there in the foreground and some of the walkway. And so that makes it a lot better, and this is a lot better certainly than having a, just a big black silhouette. But you'll notice there's still areas of complete black uh, down in the, in the foreground and in the, even in the palm trees and the other trees there. And that's something that if, you, if uh, somebody before photography, they would have put some detail into that black area and, um, and, and painted it differently than that. So it's either don't work from this photograph 
or possibly take two exposures, take one exposure for the sky and then one exposure for the foreground and then combine those two together. And that's something that a lot of photographers do. It's called high dynamic range photography. Um, and I don't want to get into that, but basically without getting complicated, the simplest thing for an artist to do is just to take one photograph that's exposed properly for the sky and then one that's slightly lighter for the foreground. But you got to be careful. You don't want to go too far with that. And I'm going to get into that in a second. But let's go through some other examples and just to show you. So this next one here has got a lot of green grass in it. It's a bright sunny day. But in the case of a bright sunny day, a very typical, as you can see, all the shadows in the tree area and up in the leaves is completely black and you don't see any detail. So if you were painting that, you would want to put a little bit of detail in there. Again, being careful, and I'll talk about that uh, here at the end of this video. But let's, uh, there's another example on the left there. You can see all those black areas uh, in the bushes um, and also even on the right underneath some of those leaves. Uh, this next one is a great uh, photograph and uh, be a perfect uh, photograph to paint from. They're, everything's in proper exposure. The only problem are those little black areas in those bushes in the pots in the foreground, uh, those plants. And so some of that would need a little detail. But otherwise, it's a good photograph. Never um, always try to expose your photograph. The most important exposure to get is the one where you expose for the brightest part of, your, of the landscape, meaning the sky, and then let everything else fall where it's going to fall, just like in this one. I did not expose this photograph so that you could see the plants in the pots because that would have completely ruined the sky and blown it out and we wouldn't have all the blue color in it and everything else. So you expose for the brightest part of your landscape and then deal with the dark parts by filling in a little detail. So let's go on to another one here. This one here is a perfect, uh, would make a great, be a great candidate to do a painting from. Um, as you can see, there you can see into all the shadows. The only exception are those rocks uh, on the horizon there on the right. And you could p easily put a little teeny bit of detail into some of those shadows. It's just a hint is all it would take. But the rest of it is uh, perfect for painting because you can see all of it and none of it is black, black, black except for those rocks. And here's one last one. Um, this one again it's exposed properly uh, for the sky which is the way it should be exposed and you can see how dark uh, my daughters are now in the foreground but you can still see a teeny little bit of detail um, if you're unless your monitors uh, you know dark or something but but there's a little bit of detail in there and that's all it takes so this would make a great painting I believe and here's another one, and I, now I want to get into just a little, some other creative ways and, uh, that you can um, make adjustments, and this is Photoshop work. But I've taken this photograph, and I've got two layers here, and that's the bottom layer, and then the top layer, I just used a rubber stamp tool and just copied a lot of that grass that was in this uh, one with the roads. I just copied it and rubber stamped, uh, using the rubber stamp tool and just paste it in some grass um, that I, and then I can work from this because I don't want the road. And you can do all kinds of stuff like that and I'm gonna show you one last one here and this is an extreme example of that. Um, what I did was I started off with this photograph here um, and it was, there was some basic elements that I liked in this as a painting, but there's a lot of problems here. If you'll notice the sky over on the left is completely blown out and washed out. And then also there's some areas in the grass where, um, especially in those bushes on the right where it's black, black and a little too dark. So what I did was I started adding layers and the first layer that I put in was this one here, um, which was from a slightly different perspective. So that kind of re, re um, really I'm just combining this image with the first image going back and forth you can see the two um, and that created my basic layout so this is real heavy-duty uh, Photoshop work that I'm showing you here now I've uh, put in the sky over on the left where it was washed out I pasted that in so that I don't have that washed out part of the sky 
And then the next thing I did was moved over the bright part there over to the right because I just thought it would work better from uh, composition wise. And then the next thing I did was uh, put in some palm trees over on the left just to give it a something just again for composition. And then the next thing I did was put in the water. I had a more detailed shot of the water where this one was kind of washed out and fuzzy. This had more detail and I just liked the way the waves looked better. And then the last thing, one of the last things I did was put a little palm tree over on the right. And of course, when I paint this, I'm going to fix all that up. So the fact that that doesn't paste in perfectly, that's fine because when I paint it, it'll be real easy to, to fix all that. And then the last thing I did was get rid of the, uh, the tourists there and uh, pasted in some grass that I believe I got from a different photograph. Um, and that is basically going to be the source that I use to do my painting from. So it really may not make a great photograph. You can see how I've pasted everything in and copied it, but it gives me a basic um, photograph that I can then turn into my oil painting. And uh, there's no areas of black, 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 except for a little bit down in the vegetation, and that's just fine. So I hope that helps you uh, deciding in what photographs to work from and how to deal with um, you know, these, this big range that you see in photographs. And again, I'll just repeat, the way you deal with it is get a good exposure, exposing for the brightest part of your landscape. Typically, that's the sky. And then um, if your foreground is too dark, take a different exposure that's a little bit lighter and then use that fo photograph for the foreground. Just being real careful because if you push it too far, it'll look artificial. Um, so I hope that's helpful and we'll see you guys next time.